Hey, welcome back. My name is Chris Wagner, Director of Data Solutions at Baker Tilly. This is Marcus Radu, Senior Architect, and we've been talking about uh, Microsoft Fabric. How are you doing today, Marcus? Doing great, Chris. Ready to dive into some more Fabric topics. Oh, that's fantastic. Now, we've been going deep into Lake House. I come from a background where I've, I've traditionally used data warehouses. Can we understand like what the difference is and are data warehouses just gone? Are they obsolete or should we still be using them in certain situations, right? Is it is it dependent upon different things or what's the deal? Yeah, that's a great, great point, Chris. Great topic to bring up. There certainly are some considerations that you'll want to think about when going into deciding between a lake house or a warehouse within Microsoft Fabric. So in today's video, we're going to walk through some of those considerations and just have those on top of mind when you're going into making uh, one of these decisions uh, within Fabric. Oh, that's fantastic. I understand you got a couple of slides we could use to talk around. Yeah, let's pull up a slide here that will help guide this conversation. Uh, and hopefully give away uh, the viewers some takeaway points to consider uh, in this decision. So as Chris mentioned, lake house versus warehouse, why choose one over the other and what are some considerations to think through uh, for that? So the first topic is really centered around language preference of your development team and, and skill set of that development team. So if your team has a, a strong background in PySpark, Scala, or maybe even R, um, you're going to want to lean maybe towards that lake house experience and leveraging notebooks to write that type of code to do your ingestion, your transformations, et cetera, with that resource. If your development team has a strong T-SQL, SQL background, they've been developing in that code base for a long time, um, then you may want to lean more towards the, the data warehouse experience because that, again, is going to be that T-SQL format, being able to leverage that to ingest, to do your transformations, um, and, and all of that T-SQL functionality that you're accustomed to in SQL Server comes along with that platform. Continuing on, it, probably the next topic uh, is data format. So. Depending on where your sources are coming from, what types of, of data formats you're receiving that data in, uh, the lake house option is going to be more flexible in terms of the types of formats it can handle. So whether that's CSV, Parquet, uh, JSON, Avro, et cetera, you're gonna have that flexibility within a lake house to handle those different formats. And that ties into the next point there of, dealing with unstructured data. So if you're dealing with a lot of unstructured data um, in those file formats that we just mentioned, again, the lake house with those programming languages of PySpark and Scala are gonna be able to allow you and your team to handle that type of data more easily than on the data warehousing side that deals much better with relational structure. Uh, so if your data is coming over from a SQL database, it's coming over from a relational type database, uh, it's going to be handled much better in that data warehouse resource. Okay, so, um, and I'd, I'm accustomed to using CSVs, Parquet, or JSON as a source for my warehouses, uh, but what you're saying is because I'm going to have to, you know, take that data and do all sorts of transformations to, uh, to make it available inside my data warehouse, Whereas in a lake house, I get to use data both as it is and in a structured format, right? Exactly right, Chris. And that kind of leads into my final consideration category, which is those migration scenarios. So if you're coming from maybe a medallion architecture where you have that bronze, silver, gold layers, maybe in a Azure data lake or an Amazon S3 bucket, where you have your data divided out like that, you're going to be able to handle that raw data and maybe that transform data in that silver and gold layer much easily 
much more easily with a lake house resource and you're going to be able to leverage notebooks and again those processing languages to do so um whereas if you're migrating data from an agile azure sql database an on-prem sql database a synapse resource with a dedicated or serverless pool that's going to transition much easier in a warehouse resource than maybe a lake house resource so that would probably be the final major consideration to think about when choosing between a lake house or warehouse so if i had an existing data warehouse and i managed it through a whole bunch of store procedures for how I update and manage data inside my solution. Uh, I could almost directly, either directly or nearly directly migrate into like a, the, the warehouse solution. Whereas, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, if I go with the lake house, I'd have to re-engineer those aspects of the solution. Is that right? That's exactly right. So if you're coming from a relational data source, like you said, and you're leveraging store procedures to do that uh, extract, transform, load process, that migration pattern to a, a data warehouse is going to be much easier as opposed to a lake house where, like you said, there would be some re-engineering through notebooks uh, in either PySpark, Scala, uh, et cetera, to do that. And And so, there's a big advantage potentially there that maybe it's it I need I want to invest the time now to do that to get onto this more forward looking or or quote unquote modern platform. But if I don't necessarily have the time or budget or resources to do all of that, I could still migrate into fabric into a warehouse solution. And then potentially leverage the the lake house alongside of it, uh, so it's not just like it, it's not one or the other, but it's both. That's a great call out, and kind of wrapping up this considerations and and summary of that, you're not tied down to picking lake house or warehouse. You can certainly leverage both types of resources in your architecture whether that's landing data in a lake house first and then transforming it via a warehouse or the opposite which you mentioned maybe landing data or migrating it into a warehouse and then doing additional transformations via your lake house and exposing data that way so that's a very important point to call out is you're not tied down once you make a selection you can leverage both resources in that architecture but when starting out, keep in mind these considerations that we've shared. It may help you along the path of making that decision on whether you want to start out with a lake house versus a warehouse. Oh, that's fantastic. In our next video, Marcus, are you going to actually show us how we could create a warehouse in Fabric? Yes, come back for our next video. We'll get started on our warehouse path and get you going with creating a warehouse. Awesome. We'll see you then.